Hello everyone, I'm the Mole Man, and welcome back to Train Simulator. We are doing something a little bit different today. That we are. We're driving a massive high-speed train. Oh yes, let's get the doors open. There we go. That's a sound we all recognise. Let's get some headlights on. Oh no, we can't get headlights on yet. We need to get the rest of the train on. We need to do the master key. Uh, pantograph. That should be practically everything, actually. Can we get the headlights on now? Oh, yep, there we go. Headlights on. So yes, welcome to the Southwest China High Speed Network. This is the CRH380A. And we're going to be going on a massive journey today, but doing it really, really fast. So it's uh, it should be a... Uh, Something a bit different. I just love how streamlined this thing is. Look at it. It's so cool. It's so cool. Um, yeah, I think the train's set up, actually, now. I think that's all we needed to do. Got some in-cab signaling to enjoy along the way. Let's bring the brakes down a little bit. Put into forwards. I think we're good to go. Battery's good. We've got our voltage. We're allowed to depart at 45 kilometers an hour in the next 30 seconds or so. So yes, we, this is a non-stop run. We are going. We are at Chengdu, and we're going to. I'm going to pronounce the place name horribly. Is it Sh Chongqing? Something like that. I don't know. Chongqing. That's where we're going. We're doing it non-stop. It's uh, what is it? So we're going to Chongqing North, and then going into the depot. Chongqing North is 298 kilometers away, and it's going to take an hour, which is ridiculous. But it, it should be. Uh, it should be something a little bit different, just to get up to speed. Depart now, please. The next station is Chongqing North. Don't be late. I do my best. Let's go. Right, so we've got cruise switch. I don't know what keyboard button that's on. Is it I? It is I. Okay, good to know. So we can use that to just hold our speed as we uh, go along today. And we're away. So yeah, this should, this should be a little bit different. I haven't driven a Chinese train in a very, very long time. I just had the urge, you know? I had the urge. And I thought, let's just go really, really fast. Actually, let's do that. I. That should hold our speed. Yep, it's holding our speed. Nice. Yes, this is just going to be a nice sort of sit back and relax sort of journey, this one. We're just doing it for the distance, really. And also, I'm sure this system will screw me over at some point. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes, what we've got passenger view-wise. Welcome on board. Lovely. Quite nice, this, isn't it? Got other views, standing up, sat back here. It's over here. I like this view. This is a nice view. Look out the window. So we uh, depart Chengdu. The, the the Chinese railway network, the high speed railway network is mad. In the past, what, 12, 13 years or so, they have built more high speed rail than every other country in the world combined. It is mad what they've managed to achieve with their high speed rail network. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's like 297 kilometers, but it's not going to take us long to do it. Oh, no, it isn't. That's, that's cool. Hopefully, we'll uh, yeah, we get up to, go up to 230 kilometers an hour. Round about now. There's the acceleration. That's kind of cool. Should we actually go back in the front? That's probably a good idea. So yeah, straight up to 230. I believe we're allowed to go 350 on this journey. Which is fast. It's very fast. Fly fasts are going to be an interesting thing on this one. Sides. So I like it. It's good fun. I'd love to go and on a train this fast one day. 
Maybe like Shinkansen or something, you know? Yeah. Alright, 140 kilometers an hour. Looks like we're going to get a 3... T if I'm reading this right, in 3.2 kilometers we're going to get a 320 kilometer hour limit. If I'm reading that right. I think we are. I think I am. I think that's, I think that's how that works. Yep, there it is on the HUD. In roughly the same amount of distance. Excellent. Won't be long till we get up to speed then. And uh, fun fact for uh, some of you older fans that have been here for a long time, you may recognise this curve. Let's uh, let's jump ahead, shall we? You may recognise this curve. Oh, hello, other train. I think it's this curve. It's either this curve or another curve, but. Come on, game. Do you want to load in the viaduct? Or are you just going to have a floaty track forever? Whatever it is. There we go. If you look at this, this this used to, this used to be my old uh, intro with the 395 on this route. Something like that, anyway. That's uh, a throwback for you. It's probably something back here or something. Yeah, it was something like that. Good fun. Good fun. Hold us at 2.30 until we're into the 3.20 zone. And go. Going to really get up to speed now. So that's, that's 3.20 is about 200 miles an hour. It's, it's fast. It's fast. I say, look at that. The speed on this thing goes up to 400. I do, I do like it. You just cover massive, massive amount of distance, just like, just like that. It's, it's just good fun. Screenshots are going to be an interesting endeavour on this one, but we'll do our best. We'll do our best. So it's not the most detailed add-on in the world. I mean, the sounds right now—they're just a bit. But I don't, I don't mind. I just like the experience of driving a really fast train. It's good fun. Do the TGV one day. That does take a little bit longer than an hour, I think. But we will do it one day. And uh, we'll get some screenshots along the way, of course. We're doing 300 kilometers an hour. Once we're up to speed, we'll uh, get some shots. I don't know if the cruise control helps us on gradients. That's something I don't know. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, cruise. That'll do the job. It's going to hold us around the same sort of place. Oh, no. It's not holding us downhill. Oh, it is. Okay, it is. Good. Let's get a screenshot there then whilst we're here. I just love how, I just love how stylish it is. I love a long high-speed train. Look at the nose on that thing. It's ridiculous. And uh, just just in case you're wondering how fast this actually is, let's uh, fly up and uh, watch it go past. Oh, there's another one on that on that bridge there. Oh, it's going in the same direction as us. This is how fast we're going. Which, from up close, is uh, very fast. As you can see. Overtaking this guy. Oh, this is going to be a golden screenshot opportunity. Look at this. I'm going underneath him. As soon as we go underneath them, we'll get a screenshot. And there's another one here. Oh, yes. Screenshot. <laughs> Love it. Can we see him in the shot? Maybe. If we just pull out a little bit. Get something that I wouldn't normally get like that. That might do the trick. There we go. Loads of trains in that one. There we go at 320. We can go up to 350 soon. He's just uh, cruising up there. Straight through a station. We're going to go through quite a few stations on this. So this is a non-stop run. So we just get to... Uh, rip it and rip it. And there's the 350. So cruise control comes off. And up we go. And we've already done... What, it's 297 kilometers. We've already done... 220 kilometers already? Is that something like that? Yeah. So it's just amazing. I love the speed of it. Uh, 
I'm saying this this route is massive as well. Once we're up to speed, I'll show you the route map because this this route is probably a contender for one of the biggest routes in Train Sim. Because obviously, high speed requires long distance, and there's multiple places you can go. All right, let's hold it there. So if we just bring up the map, so we're going to Chongqing, which is there, which is down there. Which has got so you've got two ways of getting there, and then you've got another station over here. You've got. I'm not going to try and do that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to butcher that. Then up here you've got Nanchong, which is great. I think that's probably Sweening. Yep. So it's, it's it's massive. You can't even fit it all in. It's just a huge network. See, we're currently over here. So there's Chengdu. I suspect we're going to come off here and head down direct. Which will be cool. So yeah, it's a big route. Big route, lots to drive on. Nice, it's probably one of the biggest routes in Train Sim. Not that it feels it when you go this fast. Just racing along. But yeah, I, I do love I do love high speed travel. I uh, I've not really done it. I've I've done high speed one, but that's only that's a fraction of the speed that we're going right now. I'm looking forward to high speed two. That'll be good fun. Good lord. It's one hell of a closing speed. You wouldn't want to hit a wall right now. This train to turn into a postcard. Like, that way. <laughs> it be flat. And of course, one of the things as well, when you've got high-speed rail, lots of viaducts and lots of tunnels. So, uh, yeah, in we go to tunnel number one on the journey. That's it. And as you can see, it's a long tunnel. Because uh, it's just easier to burrow straight through the ground than try and traverse it. You'd have to slow the train down to do that. Which means lots of long tunnels. But it's cool. We've got a cab light in here. We do. We turn it off again. We can. There we go. Sometimes you can toggle stuff on one key. Sometimes it's shift to do it. So it's L to turn it on, shift L to turn it off. 350 kilometers an hour. I said everything we need to know is in here. So it, we currently have no speed reduction. And it's more than 10 kilometers. So, you know, for the good foreseeable future, we've got no slowing down to do. But it's very much like LZB, I guess, where you've got... Uh, it'll tell you what the speed limit is, tell you how far away it is, and then as you get to the braking point, it shows you where, where your brake, what your braking curve is. It's kind of cool in that regard. So when we, once we get to the other end of the route in... 260-odd kilometres? Um, yeah, well, uh, we should be uh, slowed down for the arrival. But it's just mad how much we're going to do. How much distance we're going to cover. Viaduct. I love that. Let's break straight out in <laughs> tunnel into viaduct. Look at that. Yes, it's not the highest quality thing in the world, but I, I really don't care. <laughs> it's just cool. That's just crazy fast. Yeah, I, I really don't mind that this is, this is kind of low quality. Because it's just it's just fun to drive fast. That's all I really care about. Having said that, if anyone ever wanted to replace, you know, hundreds and hundreds of kilometres worth of trees to make them 3D, be my guest. But I don't think the frame rate would be uh, very good if we did that. Because when this was made, because this was this route was released several years ago now, we didn't have 64-bit. We had 32-bit. So the only way you could get from one end to the other on a route like this at this speed was to have 2D trees everywhere. These days, you could probably remake this and have 3D trees, some more audio, etc. And it would probably cope with it. But, say, back in the day, when TS was just running on 32-bit, this wouldn't cope if it was all fully fleshed out. That's kind of... It. It's, it, it's part of the train simulator story, which is, which is what I kind of like. It just it just shows that, you know, back in the day we couldn't have stuff like this and have it be detailed. But if someone remade this now or revamped it, it would probably work fine. 
it will probably work fine. That was a station. I don't know which one it was, but we, we raced straight through it, which is good. The only odd thing with this, you know, you'd think a monstrous train like this that goes 350 kilometers an hour would uh, have an American style ah, sort of horn, but no, we got this. That's not going to do anything. <laughs> I reckon that sounds fantastic if we do this. And I was right. And I was right. Look at this. Racing along. See, high speed isn't everyone's cup of tea. Because in theory right now, because of cruise control, I am sat here doing nothing. Some people see it as nothing. I see it as monitoring. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm monitoring it. It's... I'm still playing my part. I'm still being the driver. I'm making sure this thing doesn't go horribly wrong. And I like that aspect of high-speed rail. Hello, the train. CRH1A, I think. Yeah. I do like these trains. I hope we get some more Chinese high-speed trains. And they've also got some... Like new maglev concepts, etc. And it's, yeah, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I really hope we get Shinkansen one day. I really want someone to do a Shinkansen route. There's been word that Union Workshop have been teasing it. And if you don't know, Union Workshop are the developer that produce most of the Chinese and Japanese content within TrainSim. And they seem to have teased a Shinkansen project but who knows if that's even for train sim it didn't it didn't say it could just be something they're working on in their spare time but I would love Shinkansen to get a proper full length Japanese Shinkansen route would be amazing it really would through another station don't really know what it was not really fast either. Because <laughs> we've... Look at 236 kilometers. We've done... What's that? 60? Almost 60 kilometers already or something like that? It's nuts. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. Just racing along. And this route's just a nice test bed as well. For if, you want to, if you've got a fast train... This is a nice route to try out on because you've just got a nice long stretch of track that will take a high speed train. It's good. Now you can try out the Pendolino on here, Javelin, TGVs. It's all good fun to do. And similarly, you could probably take this thing on the West Coast Main Line somewhere or, you know, <laughs> throw it on high speed one and uh, it'll be a bit mad, but that's just the way it is, I guess. So it's just the crazy things you can do. Closing speed time. Blimey. 230 kilometers left to go. Going to be on time, which is good. Another viaduct. I say, if you're not into high speed, then, well, you're probably not watching this video. Um... I get that it's not for everyone. I just, yeah, as I said, I wanted to give it a go. And get a couple screenshots along the way. Because, uh, watch one of my videos if I don't take a few screenshots. And one of the things I've started doing as well is posting the screenshots on Twitter. So, go and follow at moleman978. I use it exclusively for posting video links and screenshots. I've just started doing the screenshots thing, so uh, if you want to see the screenshots, then follow me on Twitter, which is good fun, you can do that. Also a nice reliable way of getting video updates, at least when I remember to actually tweet that a video's gone out, because YouTube took away the system that auto-tweets when a video goes out. They took that away a long time ago, and it's very annoying. Recently Twitter have introduced a scheduling system. But I've still got to remember to schedule the video, schedule the tweets, and t time it right with the videos. But it's yeah, I'll get there. But that's the place to go if you don't trust YouTube's 
subscription system. I mean, even if you were to subscribe and you know tick the bell, blah blah blah. blah. I'm not going to do all that, but you know, you can if you even if you did that, YouTube's a nightmare. You probably wouldn't see anything. So, you know, because I've I've seen some people even recently who have still been subscribed saying, "Well, I didn't realise you were back," and that just means that my videos aren't in their feed. So. If you see this or you know someone who used to watch and they don't know I'm back yet, Twitter's probably the best place to uh, find out when new videos are coming. So that's good fun. 220 kilometers. Nice. It's mad. It's mad going this fast. Eat up all that track. I mean, we're, you know, we're nearly, we've nearly done. We're, we're, you know, we're getting a fair way towards having done the first hundred kilometers already, which uh, is just mad. Another short tunnel coming up. There it is. Over the water, into the tunnel. And over more water. Screenshot? I think so. That's going to add to our hour journey, of course, but I don't really care. We've actually got some wires that reflect. Look at that. That's a rarity <laughs> in tracing. A lot of wires don't reflect in water. I don't know why. A lot of uh, lofts in general and decals don't render in the water in train sim. Look at that. Nice. Oh, another station. Where is this station? Zit Zit Zitong. There we go. That's Zitong. But I'm not stopping for anyone today. This is a high speed run. Well, it'll be a high speed run anyway. It's a non stop run, is the difference. Intercity Express Plus, if you will. Because it's even faster. And, like TVM routes and LZB, it's one of those ones where we don't actually need a HUD, so I haven't got it up right now. We're stuck to the speed limit. It's driving itself. I'm just sat here enjoying the view. Just sat here enjoying the view. I did try get the I did try to get the AP skies working with this, but it wouldn't have it. Some routes use very obscure references for their time of day and weather systems, and it means changing them is a bit of a nightmare. Like, I have gone into the files and specifically pointed this route to the AP weather, but it hasn't worked, so... I did my best. I did my best. Hello, the train. We're going so fast that you're not actually up to speed yet. But you're shining off our nose. Look at that. Something like that, I guess. Why not? It's just nuts. We just go here. We just see the, the closing speed. He's going a bit slower. It's just so fast. I'm going to say that a lot. Because it's true. Also, it's nice to be able to do something easy. Because it's still a million degrees. Like, it's heatwave central. I'm recording in bulk. Just so I can get ahead of the game a little bit. But it means I'm recording in heatwave. And I don't like it. But recording in bulk is handy. When I got the time to do it, so I can get ahead of the game. There's lots to be doing. Lots I want. There's lots I want to do. So if I've got the time, I'm going to record in bulk. But it means that it's stuff that's, you know, the more I record in bulk, the more out of date the videos are by the time they go out. So I could say Class 37 Volume 2 coming soon, but by the time this video is out, it could be out. I don't know. Only future me will know that. But it's just nice to be able to drive lots of trains in one day. Racing along. I like all the posters are just advertising itself. <laughs> like, hey, look at this route. It's like, yeah, I just bought it. 
Well, I, so I got the original Chengdu to Sweening route. I bought that off Just Trains and the CRH380D. I bought those back in the day. Um, but Southwest China High Speed Network and the CRH380A, I think I got those through Steam. It's, it, it's, 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 there's a very blurred line between when did I stop buying content and when did I start getting it for free. Um, it's it's quite a time quite a time ago now because uh, before I did start working for Dovetail, they were giving me keys for you know for YouTube purposes. That must have been over five years ago now. It's mad. But it's good fun. I enjoy this. Train sim is just like my life. If I'm not working with it, I'm playing it. If I'm not, you know, if I'm just not just playing it, I'm recording it. If I'm not recording it, I'm usually making something, scenario or such like. And same with Train Sim World. Spend a lot of hours in that. And I'll spend many hours in Train Sim World 2. Looking forward to share all that with you. I say that now. I don't know when this video is going out. I don't know if it's going out before or after Train Sim World 2 is released. I just bulk recording and planning where they go out afterwards. <laughs> it's good fun. It's good fun. But it means as well, because if I get videos done now, by the time... It's it's safe to go out and stuff. I can go outside, and I've still got videos for you guys. So get ahead of the game. It'll all be good. Look at that. 190 kilometers have already done. So it's 297 down to. Let's see. I've already done over 100 kilometers. Which is just ridiculous. Going on here. This is counting down. It's gone down. It went down to nine, down to six. I'm not quite sure what that number's. Unless it's the power. Is it representing the power? Like if I go uphill, does the number go up? And go downhill, does it go down? Maybe. Alright, we're about to go downhill. So let's see what this number does. I said, I don't know. It's all in Chinese. I, I've, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just guessing based on what the train does and similarities like this is very much like LZB over here but is that right so that's the numbers disappeared oh is that just me doing that I don't know right it's going down yes that must be the power setting it must be the power setting next yeah, we level off three Four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight, nine, yeah, it must be the power. Cool. It's the most useless window on the planet, that is. <laughs> Can't see anything out of that. Have we got any alternate views? No, we don't, no. Probably just let light in. A lot of these windows don't do anything. They are useless to us. Along. It's, it's, it's amazing as well. Obviously, China's absolutely colossal in size, and it's amazing what this network has done to bring it closer together. I love it because you know a, a journey on traditional rail or road or whatever would take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Now cut down to mere hours. You know, in this case, one hour. Which is just ridiculous. Where are we? I can't read. Daying East. Okay. Yeah, it's just ridiculous what a high speed rail network does. And any sizable country should have a high speed network, I think. Because it just does bring places together in the most convenient and effective way possible. Right. Like, America usually relies on either roads or planes, but roads take forever, and planes, you got to deal with check-in and baggage. It's just a nightmare. With the train, you turn up, you get on it, it goes fast, you get there. And generally speaking, the train is usually the best way to travel 
across the same area of land. And I think every country should have a high speed network. And plenty do. Japan, of course, France, Germany, Russia, Spain, Italy. Please, I believe Italy's got some high speed lines. So, yeah, it's, it's everywhere, but it's just not everywhere, everywhere, you know? And connect it all together. Because you've got, like, Eurostar. Have, like, Asia Star. St. Pancras to Beijing, imagine that. That's the sort of thing where you'd want to fly, but I'd, I'd love the concept of it. <coughs> Dude, it's so hot. It is so hot in this room. It doesn't help as well. Drain Sim makes the computer kick out more heat than anything else. So do the two monitors. You know, it's, there's a lot going on. But uh, it's, it's what I must do. It's what I must do. But I don't have to. I want to. I want to drive trains. It's good fun. The train incoming. Nice. 166 kilometers to go. N nearly halfway. Nearly halfway. I mean, if you imagine what, 200, 300 kilometers, so 150 kilometers halfway. We, yeah, we're nearly halfway. I'm just mad. If we were doing this sort of length journey in a conventional train, it would take forever. It would take forever. So it's nice to just watch the hills roll by. So even though the assets that have been used in this route aren't the best, Lots of 2D things, etc. The attention to detail and how they've been used isn't too bad. Like, you've got the retaining walls either side occasionally. You know, the overhead wires haven't glitched out once. There's usually either a missing section or they stop loading. That's They're fine. Yes, it's 2D trees everywhere, but it means that they cover everything like they should do. It's, uh... It's not badly put together. It's just the assets themselves that could be better. But as said back in the day, if you made this look as good as say what a southwestern mainline with the new trees that that had and such, then you'd have you'd run into problems. There's the track split there, and we're climbing. Let's have a look outside. What's going on? Ah. This is where the network splits. Yeah, so that's going off towards Sweening and Nanchong, I believe. And we're taking the direct route down to Chongqing. I do apologise if I'm getting the names wrong. <laughs> I really have no idea how to pronounce them. Just doing, uh, doing my best. Imagine living there, watching a train race past every few minutes like this. I don't know how frequently they run, actually. We've gone past quite a bit of AI. Some of it faster, some of it slower. I don't know how frequently these things run. I know, like, Shinkansen can be up to every few minutes. Sort of thing. Ah, that's not a very good shot. Nice landscape, not a good shot of a train. Let's just watch it go past. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So, yeah, I don't know if there's anything. I mean, we haven't overtaken, I don't think, anything yet. Like, in other stations and such. But we've gone past plenty of trains. So I mean, it's probably quite a frequent service. And that's, that's the benefit with trains over planes as well. 
you know, a plane is often faster, but it only seats a couple hundred people. This thing could probably take, what, it's eight coaches. This coach is taking a lot. It's taking a lot of people. It only looks like one compartment as well. So, you know, there's a... Could easily fit. If, if you had two of these, you could probably fit like a thousand people or something in one train. So it's a more efficient people mover. And then comes another railway line. Is he going to join up to us? Maybe. So we're doing. 146 kilometers to go. Oh, there comes another railway line. He's joining in. Yeah. Joined. And the other one's coming in as well. Nice. Don't know where they've come from. Let's have a look, shall we? Center player. Boom. Ah, yeah. So uh, we branched off, but then you can also stop at Sweening and still continue down this line. Ah, that's cool. The Sweening Curve, let's call it that. Yeah, so Chengdu to Sweening. If we were on the original, we would have done it by now, but <laughs> we still. That was only, that's only halfway. We've still got a lot further to go, but it's. Ridiculous how quickly we do it. And I won't do this sort of thing too often because I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. But every now and then I want to drive a fast train and just chill out for an hour. It's, it's good fun. It's one scenario which I might do one day. Right, it's a speed test. You use the test version of this in a different livery and see how fast you can go. You've got to try and get up to a certain speed by a certain point. That would be cool to do. Because if you think this is fast, that goes even faster. That goes even faster. And out the tunnel. A speck of light, then out. Daylight, right on time. Love it. And this is the sort of stuff we're afraid to do. Like the amount of disputes and stupid arguments against HS2 regarding the environment, etc. Like, you know, these 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 have done it all right. We'd be fine. What what gets me is when the stop HS2 movements they cry about this ruining the landscape. Oh, but a massive new motorway or junction that's going to mean more traffic and pollution. Oh yeah, let that happen. People are just very against rail in this country and I don't get it. It's a fantastic mode of transportation. And everyone says, oh, they're building all this and it's not even going to be that much faster. It's not about the speed. High speed 2 is purely about capacity. The West Coast Main Line, the south of the West Coast Main Line in particular, is chock a block full. There are no gaps to put more trains in. So you have no options. You can't make. If you try and make trains longer, they won't fit in the platforms. That means you've got to upgrade every single station. If you try and make it wider, you've got to demolish either side of you know, the West Coast Main Line and disrupt it during all of that. So. One way or another, high speed 2 is the only way to improve the West Coast Main Line. Because then you can take the fast trains, put them on there, that opens up the fast lines to more commuter traffic in general. So if you imagine most of the Avanti services that run high speed, if they transferred onto high speed 2 using the new trains, London Northwestern can then have, have got more space to do commuter trains and slightly longer express services like they do. So that frees that up, which then frees up the slow lines for more freight. It's, it just makes common sense. It's just common sense that you have, you know, you build a whole a whole network that takes dedicated services and puts them somewhere like this and frees up the line for everything else. It's the only way. It's the only way. 
I'm looking forward to it. It'll be good fun. I'm, I'm interested to see what trains we go for. Especially as well as Bombardier and Alstom both submitted separate proposals for a high speed true train. But now Alstom have like bought Bombardier or something. Like, I, I, it's ridiculous. not not the whole of Bombardier. I don't think not the, but the aircraft building in Canada sort of thing. But the, uh, the train aspect. So you know, Derby Works that's run by Bombardier is technically going to be Alstom come next year. So I don't know if they're going to merge proposals or just throw the Bombardier one out the window, which would be odd because they're doing it with Hitachi. So I, I don't know. A little bit of a mess, but I'm just looking forward to seeing what trains we get and uh, going on them one day. High speed two. Hopefully, getting it, getting it in a train sim. Oh, tracks put in here. What's going on? I'm just like sod it. Let's build two viaducts. <laughs> Why not? I love that. Yeah, just split the railway line. Cost? What even is it? Just <laughs> do it. Just do it. I just, I just think it. You know, it's, it's, it's the modern landscape. It's the mix of the old and new. I mean, look at that. It's the mix of nature and uh, massive high speed. Oh, hello, grass. <laughs> oh, daisies. Daisies, lovely. There he goes. Love it. I don't know when we're going to get the line back on our side. I don't know why we split, to be perfectly honest. Going around this village? Doesn't mean that make much sense. It could still fit here. Looks like we're joining back up again up here. If you know why they built it like this, do let me know. But it's cool. If it is just an aspect of cool factor, then they just get all the points in my book. And the gap closes together. Back as one line. That's almost another 100 kilometers gone. This is mad. 108 left to go. And we're going to be a s couple seconds early by looks of things. Don't mind if I do. I think it would be nice as well if you had like long networks like this. That we're in other places is seeing how much the scenery changes throughout that time. This is very much hills and towns and cities in the middle of nowhere. But if you imagine other places, like if High Speed 2 ever went all the way to Scotland, for example, you would relatively quickly see the land change from rather flat to hillier and hillier and hillier and beautiful Scotland. That's the sort of cool stuff I like. Just seeing, just seeing the scenery change around you. I reckon it's impossible to train spot this. One photo, blurred. Try and fi film it. Oh, I missed it. Trying to, yeah, trying to train spot high speed trains is scary. <laughs> Because you just don't know if you're going to get it or not. It's terrifying. I have the high speed one goes over the medway. I've tried doing video and photos there. They, they turn out terrible. Turn out absolutely terrible. Because I just can't do it. It's just too fast for me to capture. But it's a fantastic experience watching the train go by that fast though. At the same height as the the horizon at the moment, and dipping back down again. 
We have got less than 100 kilometers to go. It's two thirds of the way there. That did not. That hasn't taken long to do that. 100 kilometers. Uh, this will be the fastest 100 kilometers we do. The middle one because we haven't accelerated at the beginning. We're not going to be breaking at the end. So that was the fastest 100 kilometers we've done. So that's good. Let's see it curve around the corner there. That's good fun. And I like as well, in, in game, this is called the CRH388 Very High Speed Train. I normally just say it's a high speed train. No, this is a very high speed train. And it is. It is. Lake there, very nice. It's a lake or a river. Looks like a massive lake. Yeah, it's a lake, isn't it? I don't know. I can't tell how far it keeps on going. Oh, tunnel. <laughs> and back out again. Three, two, one, out. There we go. <laughs> Poor people on that coach. Seeing a train race pass. Oh, I wish we were going that quickly. Coach. Officially the worst way to travel, in my opinion. Can't stand coaches. Imagine living in their solitary house on the lake. Oh, my God. That'd be so cool. Another tunnel. Oh, I see a cool bridge coming up. Oh, my God. Look at that. Hello train, don't care about you, I want to care about the bridge. Screenshots happening with that. Look at this monster. What have we got going on here? Wow. That's one hell of a bridge. Something like that, I guess. We'll get a couple shots here, I think. If I can time it right. Here we come. Let's get one. That's it. Blimey. And a station as well. That was that was a nice bridge that was. If we get more like that. Crossovers and eighty two kilometers left to go. And the tunnel. You can tell the ground's sort of raised in general because instead of being over it on loads of viaducts, we're getting more tunnels now. Which means the ground's changing faster than we can in terms of gradients. Come on, game. Stay with me here. The fact that tiles loading stutters are minimal, even when you're going this fast, is impressive. That was shaved quite a few seconds off the uh, ETA there. I imagine slowing down might impact that a little bit. It's not going to be long until we see a number appear. Oh, good God. We see a number appear here telling us what speed we've got to slow down to and how far we've got until we get, until we get there. Breaking in this thing will be interesting. It's all fine and well going fast like this, but it's the stopping that's the important bit, and I, I don't know how to do it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's, you know, throttle off, slam the brakes on. As long as I'm braking faster than the yellow line reduces, then we should be okay. We should be okay. Right, similarly, I would also love to see a network like this, where it's an actual standard railway line, where we're on the ground, just slowly, maybe a steam train, chuffing our way through this, uh, this sort of uh, landscape would be very nice, so uh, that'd be nice one day. I would take a conventional train along here, but 
one, it takes forever, and B, I don't know if it cope with the gradients. <laughs> there, are, there are quite some gradients on this. Because the trains have just got the momentum to get up and down them, you know. Conventional train wouldn't stand a chance. Through the trees. I'm full of leaves in my mouth now. There's another one of those retaining walls. Say, so, quality, not the best, but it's a nice, nice touch that it's there. And the fact that someone sat down and said, you know what, I'm going to make a 300 kilometer hour, no, 300 kilometer network, plus this bit, plus this bit, plus this bit. Hats off, I say. Hats off indeed. In we go. Oh, <laughs> bit of floating grass there, wonderful. 64 kilometers to go. So the only thing that would be faster right now is, is a maglev, I think. In terms of what's in train sim. That does 430 kilometers an hour. Which is good fun. Oh, splitting again, and up we go. I wonder what the G's feel like on that. As you, it must feel like a roller coaster going this fast and hitting a gradient. I feel like, you know, G's pulling you into your seat, and then uh, weightlessness at the top. I reckon designing something like this must take so much. Just you know research and testing and science stuff to make sure that you don't make people feel ill as you go over the top of a hill. So I'm going to screenshot maybe whilst we're on this single track section. Maybe not here, maybe up here. Single, single track screenshot, that's what we're here for, isn't it? <laughs> trying to time it right. Nightmare. But it's still easier than trying to time it with lightning. Oh, there goes another train. Hey. Hopefully, how are we doing? 56 kilometers to go. Just over 30 odd miles, isn't it? Yeah. And what, 30 odd miles, that's the Mebo Valley line? So we can do the Mopo Valley line distance in just over 10 minutes. <laughs> Mad. There goes a 1A. They go slower. They only do like 250. So we don't want to drive one of those. We're here for, we're here for the speed, damn it. Driving a CRH1A is very much like driving a Class 90, in my opinion. It's like... Well, I could, well, on these guys, my line, I could drive it, but the 91's faster, you know? I could drive the CRH1A, but the 380's faster. That's generally how it goes with me. If I'm in it for speed, or the long haul, I want to do it properly. I want to do it properly indeed. Got more tunnels now. 50 kilometers. Nice. And yeah, into the last sort of 10 minutes. Oh my god, bridge! <laughs> How's that for a shot? Straight out the tunnel and onto this monster. Oh my god. That's just incredible, isn't it? Look at that. That's just mad. Try and get a screenshot. One of those might have been decent, I don't know. And now into a long tunnel. 
I'm surprised the window's so big, actually. It's very easy to get disorientated, disorientated and sort of almost hypnotised in tunnels. And the texture is quite basic here, but in reality, you'd see all the different panelling and stuff if it's made of concrete bits and bobs. That's why originally on the th on the three seven threes, their windows are so small, that so drivers don't get all weird in the tunnel, in the channel tunnel. But then the three seven four came along, and they were like, "Ha! Hey, you remember all those regulations that we set for the tunnel? Yeah, well, we can just relax those because we want this train." <laughs> That's essentially what happened. And the three seven three had all the fire protection systems put in it. Could be you know easily split. And put half out either side, sort of thing. Had the small window to make sure it was uh, safe for drivers. And the 374 was like, nah, let's just, let's just make a normal train, normal high speed train, and do that. Yeah, okay, then fine. I do like a 374, but I still prefer a 373. It's the classic. You cannot beat the classic traction motors of a 373. That's another 10 kilometers done. That didn't take long at all. Less than 10 minutes to go. So it shouldn't be too much longer until we get some speed reductions. So I'm going to keep an eye out on this. Because that will be the first indication we get of a speed reduction. If we saw a speed reduction on the HUD now, we probably wouldn't be able to slow down in time for it. That's how fast we're going. We'll just get there first. So keep an eye on the the screen and see what it says. The station. Because I imagine it'll be a, a rather lengthy approach. And so then we're stopping in the uh, the depot after this as well. Which I like. I like it when scenarios and all that will include depots. Screenshot with you. Why not? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Look at that. That's just cool. So fast. And ah, another long tunnel. Come on, tunnel. There we go. <laughs> Load in, would you? I don't want to go into the uh, abyss that is the underworld of trains in without a tunnel, because it's scary under there. Load, 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 load. Thank you. <laughs> it's one of those things. So I think it's because th tunnels can be done in a couple of different ways in train sim. And if you set them as a global asset, they're always there. But if you don't, they load in sequentially like this. I think that's how it works. And it's a bit terrifying. You're going faster than it can think about loading it. So you get quite close, but this is actually the end of the tunnel. Before we go into another one. That's it. I can see the end of that one not too far away. Still no speed stuff yet, but less than 30 kilometers to go. It's been a mad journey, I love it. Look at that gradient. Up we go. Well, we're coming in off the top there. Very nice. Oh, splitting again. Catching up to a CRH1A. Slow train. Slow, insignificant train. We're faster. Oh, down we go. God, look at all this. It's like a junction on the M25. It's just <laughs> things everywhere. <laughs> it's mad. That's going that way. And then they're going back again. <laughs> okay. Good, good. Someone had a fun day designing that. That they did. 22 kilometers left to go. I really hope we start getting some speed reduction soon. 
It feels like it's going to take 20 odd kilometers to stop this thing. It won't, but it feels like it will because of how fast we're going. But it's, I suspect it's very much like LZB. So it'll give us a speed, count down to it, and at some point it'll tell us to start braking. As long as we're braking at the same curve it tells us to, we'll be fine. I think. I think. Because it's its own system, but it sort of borrows heavily from the concepts because, you know, if something's broke, don't try and fix it. There's no point, no point trying to reinvent the wheel. Not in this case. Although, with high-speed trains, they literally did have to reinvent the wheel. Conventional train wheels at high speeds, they end up hunt end up in a hunting oscillation, which will train rocks from side to side, even on dead straight track. And if it does it enough, then it throws itself off the tracks. Because uh, they're actually cone-shaped. I'm not going to be able to quite tell here, but the route... The, 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 the route oh, we're floating slightly. It's a maglev. The train wheels aren't flat. It's sort of a cone. If it, if they extended out outside, they'd be ventured into a cone. And what they had to do is sort of change the angle of that for high-speed trains so that they would stay on the rails at high speed. So they literally did have to reinvent the wheel for high-speed trains, which is kind of cool. If a conventional train went this fast, it would throw itself off the tracks, even if it was dead straight and no gradient, because it would just wobble from side to side. Which is uh, kind of terrifying, but that's the way it is. So, yeah. Ah, there we go. 90 limit in 9.7 kilometers. There it is. So. And the train. Keep a close eye. I imagine we'll get a beep when it tells us to slow down. But I'm going to keep a close eye on this now. Because it will tell us to start braking. And braking that when that's what we really should start paying attention if it does. We're eating up a lot of track very quickly. There it goes. I'm gonna take that beep as it means slow down. Yep, there it goes. You can see the the yellow bars changing. We are not braking fast enough. Go, 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 go. Take over the orange line. That's it, took over. Oh, tunnel split. Nice. So you see now we're braking sort of in line with the decreasing yellow there, sort of going a bit faster than it, which is fine. Because um, that's going to... That's counting down the distance versus the speed. So by the time we get to the 90 board, we will be doing 90. I love systems like this. Break a bit more. We're falling behind. That's it. So it's very much like LZB in that respect. The only difference is how it looks. LZB is more of a straight line. But it still has the, the, the little dial that comes down with you. It's just this is represented differently on this side. Falling behind. I suppose in reality, if you fall behind too much, it would... Uh, slam the brakes on for you. But look at that! Two point odd kilometers to, to chunking. There it is! We have done the best part of 300 kilometers in about an hour. Which is very impressive. That's it. Uh, I take it it's that signal where we've got to be down for it in time. There we go. Excellent. And the speed will change from 350 to 90 as soon as we go past this signal here. There it goes. Excellent. That went well. Here we are. Chunking north. Just come around the corner, we'll be in the station. Looks like it's a big station. <laughs> Keep braking because we are stopping here. That's a very big station, look at that. 
And that is the wonder of high speed rail. It's how quickly you get somewhere. Keep bringing the speed down. And it's platform 8, which is that one. I don't think there's anywhere in particular where we've got to stop, but in the middle is probably best. Practically on time as well. Here we are. Thanks, brakes. Deafening me there. Well done. This will do. Just let it bring us down now. CH380A brought us into Chongqing. On time. Doors open. <coughs> Voice breaks, wonderful. Look at that. We made it. We made it. Fast, 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 fast. Love it. The last little thing we've got to do is take this into the depot, I believe. Yep, which is another 3.5 kilometers. That's fine. Take it into the depot. And uh, that would be us done for today. It's got a big smile on my face. I love going. I love doing high speed trains. There's nothing like the end of a train journey when you just sinks in how far you've just travelled. It sinked in for me when I did Liverpool to London. Sort of approaching Euston is like I was in Liverpool not long ago, and now I'm in London. Let's go. Oh, I hear someone else. Oh, you're off. Pa oh no, you're stopping. But I say parallel running, but no. Right, so we're going to Chong Chongqing Bay EMU4, which is just the depot or the siding or something. It's fine. We won't use cruise control for this; just drive it manually. Up we go. So yeah, that was uh, that was the passenger run. That was uh, rather impressive. I'll do some more high speed runs one day. There's plenty to be done. Plenty to be done. Alright, I see almost at ninety. Power. There's our stopping point on the uh, on the HUD. Over we go. All right, buffers. <laughs> Make sure we stop. Imagine doing all that at high speed, and then I low I do a low speed collision with the buffers. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's just get ourselves in and done for today and. I'll find a, I'll find myself a big freezer to go into because of how hot it is here. Right, power off. Let's coast it in from here. A car! Hello, car! See, I can play as well. Oh look, another viaduct. Oh, that's cool. Not the one we saw earlier. This is where it's. This is where the the, the big plot twist. It's the same one. That we've just gone around in a big circle. It's the railway line that does nothing, but it makes you feel like you've done something. That's your train sim in general, isn't it? You don't do anything. You just <laughs> drive a train. It makes you feel like you've gone somewhere. Ah, that's a forty-five limit. Come on. Down, 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 down. There we go. 
Single yellow is a 45 limit. We got it though. Boom. We're a bit lower than it, but it's fine. And here's the depot. I'm sure this train will be a. Uh, you know, cleaned and whatnot, prepared for its next duty. There goes the boss. Yep, there we are. Straight into the central road. That's what I like to see. I guess we've got to go all the way in, so another unit can come in behind us to couple up if necessary. Let's put a bit more power on it then. I'm sure accelerating into a depot won't get me in trouble. Definitely not. There's the 1A. Nice looking train. Just slower than this, so I don't I don't want to drive it. <laughs> Nearly there. I'm practically on time as well. Although they can't really complain if I'm late to the depot, can they? That was a beep. What do you want? Beep? Oh, you're telling me to stop. Ah, oh, you're bringing my speed down. Right, okay. I'll stop here then. Good. Well, that was... A brake kiss. That was the CRH388. That was Southwest China High Speed Network. That was 300 kilometers gone by in a split second. I loved it. I loved it. Got any final message for me? Yes. Congratulations. I've successfully finished the task. That I have. And uh, if you've made it to the end, congratulations. You have successfully watched this video. But thank you very much for watching this one. And I will see you in the next video.